Hey guys, it's Polly with the Polly Nation, and I decided to do this video on when to use worm castings for brewing aerated worm tea. And the reason why I chose to do this is because all the variables are just right, and I want to show you the difference here with my setup. So, just quickly, I know nothing with me is quick because I want to really give you a lot of material to uh, soak up, but the perfect time for me to, to brew my tea is if, if I could somehow take the worm and pull it out and just like spaghetti, just squeeze the poop right out of it into a couple of handfuls or uh, three cups or whatever, that's, that would be the preferred use or when to use it because it's just full of fresh you know microbes what you want and but you know it doesn't happen like that so you know I I wrote a screenplay and in the screenplay that's how it kind of works with a farmer and he's going through the field and the worms are spitting it right into the ground you know with their tails it's pretty funny but um, the, the way that I like to do it is, is no matter what type of system you've had, if you have a hanging bag system like the urban worm bag, the worm man or something like that, or a, a, a tray system like the worm factory, uh, other systems, if you have a static bin, just a just standalone static bin, you want to keep an eye on it when you feed your worms and uh, you're going to know when to pull a couple of handfuls out because anywhere from a month, two months to three months, you're going to have what looks like nice, fluffy, moist, crumbled cake, and that's that's what you want. Now, for me, I always seem to do these videos when the cicadas are out, but it's summer, and that's what you get. That's why I'm mic'd up. But for me, I like to use the tea from the trace systems and you can do it any way you want but one month I see what I have and I go in and I move the top stuff away I can stop feeding some of the kitchen scraps because there are some uh, microbes that you don't want but you go in and you, you'll, you'll have worms and you'll have uh, cocoons in there that doesn't matter they don't care in this system you can have worms and uh, cocoons in your bag and they'll still survive. They're not like uh, deep burrowing worms where they'll die if they're put in a system like this. But these are, uh, they go into the paint strainers and because the there's plenty of oxygen that is throughout the system, they're going to survive and they're going to be okay. And then when you're done with this, you're done brewing like tonight, I'll be done and I'll just dump all this onto my garden. I'll take the bags, I'll let them dry out a little bit and then I'll put them back into my system. But the tray system, the hanging bag system is what I like for using the castings. The, uh, the tray system is what I prefer for brewing the tea because I can take the tray out and I can use, I can go down to my tray that I know is a month old and I can scoop up the castings that are, that are uh, fresh, crumbly, and they're just real nice and moist and just, that's, that's the tray that's going to contain the most lively microbes possible and that's what you want you want the most lively microbes possible and I'm going to sh I have a comparison here that I'm going to show you and this is no scientific comparison and this there's not enough data analysis here for for me or for anybody but it's an interesting uh, comparison nonetheless and I'm going to show you one bin that is about, I would say, maybe two month old castings versus a bin that is about five to six months old castings. And I have the exact same setup, the same aeration going through, uh, the same, I filled it up with, uh, it's the same water, it's tap water, but I let it bubble for a day to two days uh, and everybody knows why we do that because you want to you want to get the, the the chlorine, the chloramine, the chlorides out, uh, any salts and 
uh, that would be harmful, you let them gas off. Um, and then uh, the paint strainers, everything, it's all the same setup. So now I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to show you what the difference is between using uh, more fresh versus less fresh castings. And really, well, let me, let me show you to you first. We'll show you the five to six month old castings. Hopefully we can get this, a good shot of this here. I seem to screw these up. But you see the, around the rim here, we have what we want and that's fresh bacteria. You got bacteria, you got uh, protozoa and nematodes, and you do have fungus in here, or yeah, fungus, but you're gonna have more bacteria than anything else, but that's what we want. That's what I always brew, is I brew more bacteria because that's the bottom of the food chain and everybody's gonna be feeding on the bacteria. So you see the bag here, you see the, you see where the water table was bubbling up to I'll show you both sides. And then you see some on the hose and some on the uh, bubble tube. Okay, so that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Let me come over to this one. And this is our around two month old. And you can see we've got more microbial growth around here and we have much more on the bag too and I would almost say that there's twice as much on this one and like I said both systems are identical identical to everything and I'm making so much here it's, some people will tell you well you ruin that much you don't need that much it's true I don't I don't need this much but Whenever I uh, can make the tea, I do, and I tea often. And that's why you see things like this, and this, and this. Oh, and that one too. And I've been doing it this way since many, many, many years. I've, I, don't, I don't know, but I won't go into that. Um, but you know, everybody started off with a, uh, you know, the, the simple five gallon pump and bucket setup that system and I promoted that and I wrote about it in all my books and on my website it's, it's in all my, all my articles and you can get the recipes on that and then every and then I was seeing things like people were saying well you got to use uh, certain kind of castings and uh, you don't want the stupid pump and bucket set up those are too small they're simple they won't do anything uh -huh. and then Everybody started putting these little, uh, you know, you, you spike it with this and you spike it with that, and here's all kinds of different lists, you know, for things that you and people are growing out and they're just wasting their money when all you want to do is just get simple microbes and multiply them, get the get the little bacteria to multiply to spit, to split and, and to procreate, however they do it, and to get it onto the plants in their stoma, around the trichomes. Uh, running down and into the soil so that the soil can be boosted with uh, the proper plant food. And then everybody's, you know, the pendulum swung way this way and then it swung way back over and now everybody's saying, hey, do the, do the five gallon setup and it's like, here we go again. So, you know, the whole point is you want to use castings like, it doesn't matter what, what system you're, you're or uh, how old your castings are you can use castings that are year old okay you're not going to grow as many uh, microbes that you would with say one month to two month to three month old uh, microbes but you're still going to grow the, uh, the microbes that you need to get into your soil that's the whole purpose of aerating brewing uh, making uh, compost tea so I just wanted to show you the difference and there's there's no right and wrong way you know the wrong way is you know if you get a bad smell or uh, 
if you if you've gone too long because you've got to use you, you got to do it safely you got to use that window that 24 to, to 36 hour window or else your food supply runs out because you don't have just uh, the beneficial microbes but you have the unbeneficial microbes as well and when the food runs out um, the other microbes the unbeneficial ones and I don't want to say they're bad because I never say that they're bad microbes. They're just unbeneficial for our purpose. But that they start feeding on uh, the good beneficial bacteria and other types of uh, beneficials, and then it'll they it'll start to they'll start to populate. And I almost want to say they're like pathogens, but maybe that's the wrong word. But sometimes. It, they are because you, you so I've got pathogens in here but there's they're so low in number that the beneficials outweigh uh, the unbeneficial microbes and but if you put if you put the the bad microbes in the unbeneficial ones then they start to kill your plant it's the same reason why you don't want to use uh, the liquid the leachate that is at the bottom of your uh, worm bin and you never want that stuff to be pulling up at the bottom of your worm bin anyway this should smell like almost nothing and it should uh, maybe even have kind of a, a sweet so smell because of the molasses you're using. Now I just use regular unsulfured molasses. This is the Brer Rabbit uh, molasses uh, black strap. Uh, but another thing about this is that uh, you don't necessarily need it to be frothy looking uh, that just depends on a lot of different uh, variables as well um, but what's important is that you have a lot of agitation and then when you're done you clean everything properly because those unbeneficials will still be there and when you start up next time you don't want them so anyway uh, I just thought this was an interesting comparison I didn't think I was going to get another opportunity to do this so uh, that's what you want when you are brewing your worm tea. Use the worm castings, or if you're just making compost, you've got traditional compost or whatever, make sure that you use it when you know it is safe to use and it's ready to use. Worm castings, like I said, I just pull everything aside. It's about a month old to two months old, and I just pull everything out and I just throw it in the bag. I'm ready to go when I'm done with it. I pull that bag out, let it drain to where it's not just pouring water out. Maybe I squeeze it out a little bit and then I put it back into the worm bin uh, for later use. But, and then it'll, it'll, it'll revive again and it'll, uh, the worms will go in and uh, eat up some of those sugars and they'll enjoy it actually. So it's just all recycled. And then I'll link to it but I just did a video before this where I'm pouring some of these microbes out you can see here I pour those out into the paint strainer me and my grandson were and then you could actually put those back in the worm system or you can go put them underneath your mulch and put them in your plants but I'll link to that and a few other links if you want to purchase some books and uh, some ebooks and paperback books and watch some other videos. So anyway, uh, this is the Pollination. I'll see you next video.